November 29th, 2018, and I am going to reveal some personal philosophy in this broadcast, and you can see it is entitled, Why I No, no Longer Observe Merry Christmas. What you're seeing on the screen are beaded ornaments. They're handmade. Each element in these ornaments are hand pinned. So every single bead is pinned, each bead with a pin. And um, sometimes there are multiple elements on the pin to give it three-dimensionality. It's very time-consuming and they are very elaborate and this is something that competes with kind of a raggedy Christmas tree for my first Christmas memory. When I was um, a little girl, I was two, three, four years old when I have my first memories of these, I would say I was a year and a half to two years old, probably two years old. Uh, these ornaments were what my mother did. She would set up a tray, a TV tray, in the living room, and usually the day after Thanksgiving, and she would um, go to the dime store or what we knew of as the DNC, um, the uh, the five and dime store and she would buy ribbon and these two and a half inch um, styrofoam balls and then she would cover them completely with broken up costume jewelry that she would buy over the spring summer and fall at garage sales she would break them up and use all the elements um, to create these beautiful creations. These are not my mother's um, creations. And as a little girl, I wanted to do what my mother did. So she would give me a styrofoam ball and a little pile of sequins and maybe a few very inexpensive beads and let me create whatever I wanted. And so that became part of the fabric of my Christmas uh, you know, it ebbed and flowed. Some years I did it, some years I didn't. But my mother became known for her beautiful Christmas ornaments, every bit as beautiful as every one of these that you're seeing. And even the most simple design would take somewhere around five or six hours and the more elaborate ones could take two or three days just to com um, complete one ornament and part of the reason for that is like I said you're hand pinning everything but also you would be working on an ornament and then you get an idea for a variation or a completely different ornament put down the ornament you are working on and set the pattern for the next ornament so you wouldn't forget it and how I know this is because in my later years, when I was a young adult, um, you know, I needed extra money. And so I began creating these with an eye towards selling them. Um, and I needed the extra money as a young mother. Not just at Christmas time, I needed the extra money all year round. But uh, and as you can see in this picture, these the kits to make these ornaments are very expensive if you buy them in kit form. You get all the pieces, but you have to actually uh, sit there and do all the work yourself. So you can't sell them for what you paid for the kit, to be sure. And the more elaborate they are, uh, the more time they take, so you'd never make your hourly wage, ever. But I always had a problem with this. I, I, I always felt conflicted about making money off of Christmas. And so, in the end, I switched to the Christmas that I showed you 
in the Christmas symbolism broadcast, the wafer-like white ornaments with Christian symbolism uh, impressed or embossed on them. But even that, I just, um, I was conflicted and it came to be that I uh, never actually sold very many of these ornaments because they're very expensive pieces of artwork and not everyone is prepared to or can afford to pay $40 for uh, an ornament or 50 or 60. I've seen the kits themselves uh, run as high as $60. But nevertheless, uh, in the end, I did not uh, make any money off Christmas. It just, there was something about it that I just wasn't comfortable with. And so, um, this is one of the reasons that I am producing this broadcast. Next, I want to show you... Um, I want to go back to when I was a young woman and raising my first child. She was about 11 months old in September and what I'm about to show you took place in September. Now this is a special effect and honestly it's not a very good one. Uh, this is a new feature in my editing software that I uh, taught myself how to use fair enough to approximate an experience I had when I was a young mother. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I uh, was diligently seeking God's guidance to raise my children as good people, as God-fearing people, as part of what I saw as my assignment. Um, and at the end of my life, I could present to him children who were well-raised and God-fearing, um, or God-respecting in this case. And while I was seeking his guidance and my daughter was turning a year old and we were anticipating her first real ability to enjoy Christmas in a couple of months, I had this experience. comes from the book of John chapter 14 and it starts with verse 1 it's the whole uh, chapter really of 14 but um, as you saw in the special effect there was something that jumped out at me and it honestly when I was reading the verse it was just like a movie so the verse reads, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself. Or as this translation reads, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So um, to say that that had a profound effect on me is an understatement. Uh, I was stunned. And I had to read that first three, five verses again to make sure that what I had read was actually true. Now, as I said, Christians um, who diligently seek God and his will, if they are blessed by God to have an experience like this, 
uh, once in their lifetime, it's a miracle. It was very personal, and it was as if somebody had hit me in the chest or uh, sounded a very low uh, note that is so low you almost can't hear it, but you can feel it vibrate your whole body. I've, I've been fortunate in that I have had on a handful of occasions personal messages like this where I knew that um, I was being given direction and guidance and comfort. Never did I feel judged. Never did I feel um, in peril or over the years, this experience resonated uh, within me. I still celebrated Christmas. I still made Christmas ornaments for friends and family. Um, and during that time frame, I was also was the time frame that I thought about selling them to make extra money. But this nagging suspicion that there was something very wrong about what we do as Western Christians to um, hype and celebrate and um, observe the birth of Christ, it just became less and less about Christ and more and more about buying things and putting shiny uh, packages under a tree that doesn't have anything to do with the birth of Christ. As we've discussed in the uh, two broadcasts where we talked about the roots of Christmas symbolism and the Christmas tree and also the um, time and place of birth, and the episode we did on that included the shepherds. And so, you know, in thinking about this, I really came to a place this year of having to make a decision about whether I would follow what the scripture said or I would follow tradition. And this year I broke with tradition and did not observe Christmas. Even as I look out my window now, I can see the uh, city decorations across the street in my park, and they played Christmas music while uh, the children were there on Saturdays to visit Santa Claus. They played Christmas music on Christmas Day. And I must say that I believe, I still believe, that some of the most beautiful music ever created was created for this season. The fav my favorite church service when I was growing up in a traditional denomination was called um, lessons and carols and all we did was read scripture and sing carols for the whole of the service there was no sermon and it's my all-time favorite liturgical service from that time in my life um, but as i said this year i broke with tradition This uh, broadcast as a personal revelation not to cast uh, light on your celebration not to sit in judgment or condemnation of people who observe this season for a long time when I was struggling with this um, season and what I thought about it and whether it was scriptural or not I used to say well if this is the one time of year where people talk freely and openly about Christ and his 
sacrificed for us, then I'm all for it. I'll participate. But even that philosophy is not uh, the philosophy that I want to take home with me when I leave this earth. And so for you, I present this as something to think about, something to consider when you are thinking about your walk with Christ and your actions, uh, how they honor him and so forth. So I leave you here with the open book and the scripture that had um, the most profound effect on me when I was a younger woman. And so for me and the shepherd on this sometimes brilliantly sunny day and currently cloudy day and sometimes rainy day earlier, we hope that you are blessed and we hope that you are looking forward to a blessed new year. We will see you soon.